The confirmed number of coronavirus cases in Los Angeles County comes to 1,229,311. The confirmed number of deaths reaches 23,641. Here in Torrance, the total number of confirmed cases is 7,179, with total confirmed deaths at 205. We anticipate those numbers to increase as the county updates its last 24-hour operating period. Welcome to COVID-19 Today. I'm Leslie Robbins. It's 4 p.m. on Monday, April 19th. Los Angeles County hit record lows this weekend in COVID-19 test positivity rates as more residents are getting vaccinated. Los Angeles County public health officials reported the daily test positivity rate under 1%, which is the lowest it's been since the pandemic began more than a year ago. Now, while officials are encouraged by the steady decline in daily cases and transmission of the virus, as well as increased vaccinations, they cautioned residents to be vigilant against the new variants of the virus by adhering to safety protocols, such as wearing face masks, washing hands often, social distancing, and implementing safeguards at workplaces. The county's public health director, Dr. Barbara Ferrer, said as the weather gets warmer to keep up the safety measures that have helped to reduce transmission. California hits a promising milestone as more than half of the state's residents have now received at least one COVID-19 vaccine dose. According to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, at least 52.2% of Californians, 18 and older, have been at least partially inoculated. While California's fully vaccinated population is just under 30%, ranking 36 among other states, the state's health officials say everyone in the state, 16 years and older, who are all now eligible to book a vaccine appointment have received at least one dose. To date, 24.2 million doses have been received statewide, with California expecting increasing supplies of Pfizer and Moderna to cover the difference as the one-dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine remains on pause. California Governor Gavin Newsom says he expects about 1.9 million total doses this week and up to 1.5 million more doses are expected to be delivered to other vaccination sites supported directly by the federal government, such as qualified health clinics and pharmacies. Los Angeles County is expected to receive a little over 361,000 doses this week with more than 700 vaccination sites available across the region. The local community college is evaluating how to best bring back its thousands of students on campus this fall as El Camino College's COVID-19 task force committee meets. COVID-19 testing and contact tracing efforts are part of the many integrated solutions the school is proposing. Now, before students return on campus, they will also need to provide a completed medical survey and get their temperatures taken. In the case of a high temperature, students will either have to quarantine or provide a doctor's note saying their temperature is not COVID-19 related. ECC has also utilized help from forensic analytical consulting services to work with individual divisions and faculty to establish what is needed to reopen their campus. Proper social distancing, signage, physical barriers, and spacing in classrooms are among the considerations being evaluated to reopen, as well as hiring specialized vendors to handle the campus reopening. There are close to 24 thousand students who attend El Camino College either in a part-time or full-time capacity. As more people across the country become eligible to receive the vaccine, questions continue to linger among those who have yet to get the vaccine. 
So the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention updated its myths and facts page about COVID-19 vaccines recently to help clear up the rumors. One of the concerns circulating is whether the vaccine will impact fertility. The CDC confirms that the vaccine is safe for those looking to have a baby one day. Officials say there is no evidence that the COVID-19 vaccine causes any problems with pregnancy or that there are side effects of infertility from the vaccine. Another question was, will a COVID-19 vaccine alter my DNA? And the CDC says no. The two types of COVID-19 vaccines currently available are the mRNA vaccine and a viral vector vaccine. Medical experts say vaccines deliver instructions to our cells that start building protection against the virus that causes COVID-19. And the materials never enter the nucleus of the cell, which is where the DNA is. All COVID-19 vaccines work with the body's natural defenses to safely develop immunity to the disease. There were several other commonly heard questions answered on this site. Head to cdc.gov to learn more. Makers of the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine announced they will make a third booster shot for its two-dose vaccine by this fall. Studies for Moderna's vaccine shows it is more than 90% effective against the coronavirus for six months after the second shot. But officials say what's unclear is how long immunity from the virus lasts. Recent reports have found that while it is rare, there have been people who were fully vaccinated but still got infected and tested positive for COVID-19. Experts say it can occur to vaccinated individuals who are exposed to a variant of the virus. Officials say while the vaccine provides great protection, it's essential that everyone continue to follow public health guidelines like wearing masks, washing hands, remaining vigilant, and avoiding crowds and large gatherings. Pfizer's two-dose vaccine will likely follow the same regimen as Moderna, as company officials announced that people who received their vaccine will likely need a third dose as well, between 6 to 12 months after their initial vaccination. The booster shot will be needed to fight against coronavirus variants that have developed since the start of the vaccine's rollout. Following the booster, officials say getting your COVID-19 vaccine would likely become an annual event, similar to getting your flu shots every year. Researchers still don't know how long that protection will last against the virus. Unlike the measles or the mumps vaccine, which gives you lifetime protection, COVID-19 continues to warp into different variants. The third vaccine shot is being tested to guard against those mutated versions. The White House announced plans today to ensure underserved communities across the country are offered equitable distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine. The Biden administration says they will allocate $150 million from the American Rescue Plan to community-based health care providers across the nation. The money will help facilities that often welcome community members without an appointment or insurance and typically serve low-income communities and help ramp up vaccination efforts by providing education about the virus, improve infrastructure to things like computer systems, and improve their overall response in mitigating the spread of coronavirus. The provider must apply for the funds by May 14th, and then the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services will decide who is approved for funding. The Biden administration announced last month it would dedicate nearly $10 billion to expand access to COVID-19 vaccines for the hardest hit and high-risk communities and increase vaccination confidence across the country. The Torrance Public Library welcomed back visitors for the first time since the pandemic. All six branch locations opened their doors with a soft opening this afternoon. Branch hours are from 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Beginning April 26, the libraries will begin operating under modified hours following Los Angeles County protocols for in-person services. Along with modified hours, many safety precautions have been put in place. Patrons will be limited to one hour maximum stay in the building 
and 30 minutes on the computer to allow for proper cleaning and to allow for more patrons to enter and use the services. The phased reopening plan was created in response to the community's feedback from the recent survey put out by the library, asking library goers what services they would like to have access to, what times and what branches they frequent. You can learn more about the services available at library.torrentca.gov. Torrance residents will need to set their reminders to move their cars once again on street sweeping days. Beginning today, the city of Torrance will resume parking enforcement with citations handed out once again to the tune of $43 if the parking signs are violated. Early in the pandemic, the city council approved temporarily pausing parking enforcement as many residents were beginning to work more from home, as well as many being laid off during the pandemic. Now, street sweeping is an essential part of helping to keep streets and storm drains clean, and parking regulations help keep cars off the streets so that the streets can be swept up of any debris. Officials say an average of 11 to 12 tons are collected per day, helping to avoid trash from falling into the ocean. You can learn more at torrentca.gov. April marks Distracted Driving Awareness Month, and the Torrance Police Department launched a new campaign, hoping drivers will take a break from their phones and focus on the road. Throughout the month, there will be additional officers on patrol, specifically looking for drivers who violate the state's hands-free cell phone law. According to the 2020 California Statewide Public Opinion Survey, more than 75% of surveyed drivers listed texting as their biggest safety concern. In California, drivers are not allowed to hold a cell phone or other electronic devices while behind the wheel. And drivers under the age of 18 are not allowed to use a phone for any reason, including hands-free. Authorities say if you need to make a call or send a text, pull over at a safe location. Drivers are encouraged to silence their phones before driving or put it out of reach to avoid picking up that call and becoming distracted. The Torrance Police Department welcomes its newest member of the canine unit, Dino. He is a three-year-old Belgian Shepherd from the Netherlands. Dino and his handler recently graduated from canine school and are ready to serve the Torrance community. Look how cute he is. The city's canine program, which started in 1981, has been an integral part of assisting field operations by utilizing canines when their special skills and qualities make an incident safer or more effective. The primary function of the canine unit is locating and apprehending felony suspects and finding evidence. Welcome, Dino. Well, before we go at the end of each program, we'd like to share feel-good stories from our community. Pictures, images, and videos that remind us of how resilient our community is and how Torrance truly cares. More businesses continue to offer free giveaways to those who have been vaccinated. First, it was Krispy Kreme, which continues to offer a free donut to anyone who shows their vaccination card. And now, the Torrance Bakery is offering a free cookie to anyone who's been vaccinated as well. You can choose from a free peanut butter, oatmeal raisin, chocolate chip, fudge chew, or snickerdoodle cookie. This offer is good through the end of the month. What a great way to show support for those in the community, one sweet treat at a time. Now, if you have a great story, upcoming event, a photo or video you'd like to share, email us at COVID19today at torrentca.gov. We'd love to hear from you. Well, that's our update for COVID-19 today. We'll see you here tomorrow as Rhiannon Chutanich brings you the latest. Please be safe, stay healthy, and thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.